Hey, what's up guys? This is Anthony from Anthony's Customs, and for this review, we are looking at the Marvel Legends Spider-Man animated series Doc Ock and Aunt, or Aunt May. I say Aunt May. And this is part of their VHS animated series thingy, and this was Hasbro Pulse exclusive, and you had to pay the full price of two figures to get one figure you wanted and one figure that's really not anything worth paying for at all. Uh, so is that gonna work out? Well, it's Cartoon Doc Ock, so there's some good stuff about it intrinsically, uh, but there's a lot of bad stuff going on in this box set, unsurprisingly. So let's go ahead and get it off the stand and take a closer look. This guy stands just about 16 and a half centimeters. That's gonna make him pretty close to, and we'll call it six and a half inches. It's a little bit higher, but we'll say that's hair and doesn't work for scale purposes. Aunt May. I think he calls her Aunt May in the cartoon, so that's why I'm gonna do it. She's about five and three quarter inches tall, not counting her hair for skill purposes, and that's gonna make her about, and we'll call it 14.75 centimeters. And here we have a comparison up against the animated series Spider-Man, which has the paint job that none of the other animated series type Spider-Man figures have. Go figure. Uh, she's shorter than him by just a little bit. And then Doc Ock, is he's huge compared to spider-man because this spider-man is grossly undersized for the animated series okay so let's do a question of the day how badly did you want animated series doc ock for me it was all the way i wanted that that's the only doc ock i care about frankly and so they finally made it so i like that second question of the day how badly did you want this Aunt May included with Doc Ock or even as a standalone figure. For me, it was zero. Somebody mentioned one time in one of my comments, well, it's nice to have her in case you want to pose one of the villains capturing her. Okay, sure. But that's a very, very tiny subgroup of an already tiny subgroup of collectors. So realistically speaking, I'm guessing most people didn't want this. And I'm guessing even fewer people wanted to pay full action figure price for it. And that's where I stand. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead and talk about the aesthetic. We'll get her out of the way first, I guess, because who cares? Uh, she doesn't even look like the cartoon, really. She's got that weird hidden hidden valley, <laughs> uncanny valley. She's she's ranch dressing. She's got that uncanny valley face thing going on where they're like going hyper realistic, but also Pixar at the same time. And also they still just didn't make it accurate. Like, look at this. That's her face there. That's her face there. Different hairstyle, different head shape, and everything. This looks like a dude almost. Like, it's weird looking. It's really weird looking. And then the rest of the figure is just, it looks so bland. It honestly looks like a McDonald's toy. The way this, the coat doesn't fit properly to the shoulders. The way there's no paint anywhere other than the face. The way the, the skin on the feet, it's painted, but it's glossy and doesn't match. Like, it looks, it looks like hot garbage, trash terrible it's offensive that they included this with her arms are backwards that they included this with doc ock i mean obviously they did it because they it's cheap as hell to make this figure and they made a bunch of money by doing it because everybody wanted doc ock but this is a garbage figure so it's aesthetically speaking just gonna go zero out of ten okay let's talk about doc ock well uh they screwed the colors up <laughs> i mean come on the green's close enough but the yellow is way too bright, and then the orange is even brighter. It's it's nuts. Like it's not that hard to just match the colors. You put the colors on the box. It, the orange is not neon orange, and these colors don't even really match the cartoon exactly. But seriously, the orange is not supposed to be neon orange. This looks so cheap. Zero paint on the yellow. None. It looks. I mean, it is bare plastic, but there's not even any line work. Here, I'll bring this back up, because... Look, at, there's like a rivet there, some line work around the chest plates. Anything to bring it to life. Anything, but nothing. We got zero. They didn't paint the line work on any of the green. They didn't paint anything other than the orange spots, which they got wrong. And of course, the face, which again... They did like this weird thing, and they gave him this crazy big red lip. It looks ridiculous. The glasses look okay. I'll take the hair sculpt. And like even the head sculpt is probably fine because you can't see most of it. So I don't mind that it's a little bit too realistic for the animated style. 
But what is with that big fat lip? It looks ridiculous. In fact, not having any paint on this figure looks ridiculous. The sculpt, it's solid, except for one thing, which is, it's mind boggling to me how bad they are at making action figures. They are the biggest toy company in the world, or at least in contention for the number one spot, and they're horrible. It, look at this. His legs have lines going all the way up. They have to have a cut joint right there. Do they line the sculpt up with the articulation? No, that would be too much work. They have some guy sculpting the figure and another guy cutting it up, or whoever's sculpting it and cutting it up just has no idea how to do anything. Skew these lines slightly, ever so slightly, so that when you get here, there's already one there. Like, look, 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 look on the side. They're basically already touching. Adjust them a little bit so that when you get up there, the line is part of the cut, or the cut is part of the lines. It's It would have been perfectly hidden. As it is, it looks like crap. It's so lazy. It's so lazy, and it speaks to everything that's wrong with Hasbro. They don't care at all about the final product. They only care about what they can get you to buy. This is this right here is absurd. It's such a silly thing. It's a little tiny thing and that's why people say I'm too negative. No, this isn't acceptable in a collectible. <laughs> it rhymed. And don't tell me it's not a collectible. Hasbro Pulse exclusive two pack from a cartoon from 30 years ago. That's not for kids. It's an adult collectible and they can't even get the lines to line up right. They can't match the colors. They can't do any line work. They can't even spray solid colors on the yellow so it doesn't look like a dog's chew toy because it's just bare PVC. They can't spend the extra money to, to mold orange for the joints there rather than running more yellow nylon because they already had to for other parts. Don't even get me started. Okay, we're only on the aesthetic. We'll get into the rest. So aesthetically speaking, he's gonna get a generous, because the sculpt is nice other than this, he's gonna get a seven. But what a lazy half-assed pile of garbage compared to what it could have easily been. Easily could have been so much better. Now, as far as accessories go, you get two fist hands for Doc Ock. So he's got one vertical hinge gripping hand, which is cool, but I don't know what that's for exactly. Maybe someone can tell me. Uh, he's got one claw hand and then the two fist hands and then Aunt May, which is really just a pack and throwaway figure, gets two open hands and two fist hands. You know, for all the times she's using her fists. Uh, I'll go two out of 10 for accessories. Okay, for articulation, we're gonna start with this one because honestly, this figure, it's really, it should have been a pack in. It should have been added in with another Spider-Man figure that was a better sized, more appropriate animated series Spider-Man figure. This one is not worth 10 bucks. All right, as far as articulation goes, the lollipop is strong with this one. She's got the hinge ball peg combo, so you can really get that neck going. You can really do whatever you want with that neck. Shoulders have full rotation and a hinge, and obviously a lot of this is reused parts. So somebody tried to tell me once that those are lats. Nope, unless Aunt May has lats going through her, her jacket, her blazer. I don't think so. Elbows have a swivel and a single joint. Her wrists have a swivel and a hinge. And that's basically it. Like, yeah, technically there's more articulation. You can rotate her at the waist and there is something going on and there's like standard articulation as far as I can tell, but you can't pose her. She's, you can't even like pose her sitting down or bent over like she's being carried by somebody, like a bad guy carrying her on his shoulder or something like that. Nothing. All she can do is stand there. Ankles are standard ankles, but who cares? You can't move the legs. So all she's good for is standing there and having this goofy ass look on her face. Zero out of 10. Okay, let's talk for articulation. Let's talk about this guy's articulation. The one that everybody came to see. The one that's in almost entire, probably is entirely new sculpt. Maybe they reuse those biceps, hard to say. I don't think so, I think it's an all new sculpt. All right, so let's just, let's get the head out of the way. They did one of my favorite things, which is arguably one of the most important things you could do. They have a neck that's articulated, which is a bonus. I don't even care about that. That's nice, but it's not necessary. They have a double ball peg for the neck, for the neck to head joint, but look at that. Could there be less range? Honestly, I don't think they could make less range without it being a fixed joint. This is absurd. These people are 
entirely incompetent. They're horrible at their jobs and, and I'm tired of not saying as much as I could be saying to try to have some kind of semblance of professionalism, but this is just ridiculous at this point. You can't move the head. You can just rotate it. And then because of the way they did it, it's at some weird ass angle that you can't really do anything about. It's just, that's it. That's the only articulation you get other than rotation. Leaning, basically nothing. It has all of the joints it needs to have the best range out of any Marvel Legends that they've had. And they didn't do it right because they can't handle making a ball and socket. Guys, a ball and socket for Hasbro is too hard. And they tell me I'm too negative. Okay, let's, you know what, before we even get to the arms, let's get to the, to the octopus legs. They peg in horizontally with cylindrical pegs. You can't freaking use them. These are fully bendable. They don't need to rotate here. Make this pegs square. Or at least facet them enough that they don't rotate on their own. If you put it all the way up, it'll stay. Anything short of that, it's creeping. It's creeping and it's down. Garbage. Hot, steaming pile of garbage. The bendy tes... <laughs> <laughs> the bendy tentacles work well enough, but not particularly well, because they're using hard PVC. This is a relatively hard PVC, like it has no squish at all. Do you remember the old Sentinel Build-A-Figure tentacles? Those were a softer material, they bent really well. These do not, the PVC is too hard. The little claws on the ends, you have two open ones and two closed ones, they have little ball pegs on them that don't do practically anything. Forget about this guy being supported by his tentacles. It's not happening. One, they're not stiff enough. They're too stiff to bend and not stiff enough to hold him. And two, because of the way they connect with such a floppy, horrible design, this is PVC by the way. So it's PVC peg going into PVC, nothing rigid at all about it. They can't support any weight at all. They can hardly support themselves. Look, it's creeping down. Maybe you guys can't tell. It crept a little bit, this one did. Because they can't hold themselves up. So the tentacles, garbage they're okay kind of if you actually really try to balance them in a certain pose and have him on the shelf because they can't do anything else this one it's just floppy ridiculous the shoulder pads are all one piece with the chest so they don't rotate with the arm at all so you can't bring his arm forward at all of course it can go back a little bit goes out to the side no problem uh, full rotation at the bicep is fine, but they left a big gap. You guys see the gap? It's pretty gappy. Double jointed elbow. Let's see what kind of range we get. With the big gauntlet, you get just better than 90 degrees because they didn't account for it apparently at all. Yeah, you're just going to get about 90 degrees out of the elbow. So very, very basic articulation. Wrists have a swivel and a hinge. That's okay. Torso joint, I like. It doesn't have that much range, and it could have a whole lot more, but it's decent. You get get the rotation, get the leaning, all of that. I'll take it. I'll take it. Though I do think they could have easily added an ab crunch in here. They already have it all cut up right there. I mean, the character design has it. And just because this is glued onto his back doesn't mean he can't have range. He could have at least been able to lean forward. But no, we can't have that. Too much expense. Or the hips. They do go forward pretty well. I do like the sculpt overall of the legs. They're getting better at that. They go back a little bit out to the side. Pretty good splits, no problem there. The hips don't stick out real far at the hip. I like that. That ugly, horrible, lazy thigh swivel is fine. Double jointed knee. Oh, the nylon always gets stuck. It's pretty good and you can see the proportioning is closer to what it should be. Even though you can't get the leg up there, you can see that this part of the leg is about the same length as this one. It's close enough that it's acceptable and it does look better. There's so much more shape to his legs than we normally see so that's really nice i like that a whole bunch boot swivel is not a thing you would expect it is a thing at least on mine it's not maybe it's just really stuck on both but i don't think so ankles go all the way back and all the way forward and they have a good ankle rocker so there's a couple of nice things about it but it's a couple of nice things on a brand new mold is not enough from the biggest toy company in the world on a figure that people have been excited for or wanting for forever and excited for since they announced it 
It couldn't, it really couldn't be any lazier. Articulation wise, it's going to get a five out of 10. It's acceptable other than the tentacles, which are just a giant disaster. They don't pose well enough and they can't hold themselves up. So they're just long and in the way <laughs> Story of my life. It's just been, it's not pleasant to handle this figure. They didn't put enough effort into it. And the fact that you have to buy this piece of garbage in order to get this halfway piece of garbage, which is something I've wanted since I started collecting Marvel Legends, it's offensive. And now it's time to rate the two pack. Considering the price and the amount of effort they put into these two action figures, this one, which is just a throwaway accessory, and this one, which is so half-assed it's offensive, I'm gonna say it's an overall rating of uh, four out of 10. I am thoroughly disappointed. This figure is so much less good than it should be and bad in a lot of ways that it should never have even been close to. So uh, there it is, guys. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. If you liked the video, though, please do give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. And if you haven't subscribed, you should. I have new videos almost every single day and thousands already on the channel. So make sure you come back for all of that. And in the meantime, keep collecting.